What's going on, everybody? We have finally done it. We beat Uber Lilith. And let me tell you, it is not easy as a druid. However, we have found the perfect build for taking her down. With this build, you're able to one shot through the first phase, get her one shot in the second. One issue is they did remove the ability to get rid of the boils. So the only thing you truly have to do is get the dodging mechanic down for dodging the skulls going through the second phase. Today, I'll go ahead and break down the build, the gear, the aspects, and the paragon board for you guys. And then in the future, probably tomorrow, I'll drop a video covering the entire fight, letting you guys know all the little tricks that I found that make it a lot easier, the timing that you're gonna need for certain abilities, and the core mechanics behind dodging the skulls. Guys, as always, if you like the video, make sure you like the video, drop a comment, let me know what you think, but most of all, make sure you sub to the channel and you click that bell so you know every time I'm posting new content. Let's go! All right, as always, we're gonna go ahead and start with the skill tree. You wanna put one point into Storm Strike, one point into Enhance, that way you unlock your core skills. We do go ahead and max out Tornado, come down here to Raging Tornado, that way you can keep enemies vulnerable for as long as possible. And then you're going to max out Shred as well, because this is honestly our main point of damage. And then come down here to Primal Shred, that way you are performing the dash for your second and third attack and doing 30% more critical strike damage. This is our key point of damage, which you will see in the video. And then you're going to put three points into Predatory Instinct for that extra critical strike chance. Come down here and for defensive skills, all we're going to be using is Blood Howl, one point into Blood Howl, and then going down to Preserving. That way we get the extra attack speed. Attack speed does allow you to cast your tornadoes faster. So it is really important to go ahead and put a point into there. Then head over here and put three points into Vigilance. This is a very squishy build. So the 15% damage reduction, since you are spamming Blood Howl, in my opinion, is well worth it. We don't use companion skills at all for this build. So you don't need to worry about anything in this tree. Then we do come down here to our Wrath skills, and we're going to go ahead and use Hurricane. Uh, we like Hurricane because it is going to stack our Critical Strike damage, but then it's also going to help create more vulnerable chances on Lilith. That way you're doing the most amount of damage as possible. Then one point into Elemental Exposure, and then Endless Tempest. That way your Hurricane lasts a little bit longer. Then the main point that we're going to be doing on this part is going into Toxic Claws. You want to go ahead and put three points into Toxic Claws. I have six because you're going to want the three points on your amulet for Toxic Claws instead of End Venom. But we are still going to put three points into End Venom because it is an extra 30% critical strike damage. And for ultimate skills, we're going to go ahead and put three points into Defiance. Just one point in the circle of life, that way we can get to resonance and put a full three points into there. You're going to want three points into defensive posture, that way you're getting that little bit of extra amount of fortify. You want to max out Grizzly Rage, because Grizzly Rage is hands down the best and the only ultimate that you can really use for this build. And then for your key passive, you're going to go ahead and go into Perfect Storm. And for Spirit Boons, we're going to stick with Wariness, 10% damage reduction from Elites. We are really squishy with this build, so where we can make up that damage reduction on the skill tree, I do think is worth it. You're going to bond with the Eagle, go with Scythe Talons, 5% critical strike chance, which is going to be huge, and then Avian Wrath for the 30% critical strike damage. Then for the Wolf, you want to go Calamity, 25% extended duration to ultimate skills, that way your Grizzly Rage is lasting 25% longer. And then you want to go calm before the storm. That way you have a chance to go ahead and get your Grizzly Rage back a little bit faster. Okay, now let's talk gear, aspects, and stats. We are going to want two uniques for this build, which can be pretty frustrating to find. One is going to be Tempest Roar, and then the other one is going to be Mad Wolf's Glee. I like Mad Wolf's Glee because it gives you movement speed, 
poison damage, and then also you're gaining three rings to all of your werewolf skills. Tempest Roar, though, is what makes or breaks this build. You cannot do it without it. You could not run Mad Wolf's Glee. You'd be losing a lot of damage, and this build is all about doing damage. Literally, you get one shot no matter what by most all of Lilith's skills, so it really doesn't matter to stack damage reduction or anything like that. We're just trying to stack movement speed and power. The biggest thing about Tempest Roar is the fact that your base storm skills are also werewolf skills. So you're gaining a ton of procs and a ton of ranks to the damage that you're going to be able to do. And it truly brings this build together. From there, we're going to go into our gauntlets where you're going to want Storm Chaser's aspect so that you can throw out more tornadoes that are going to seek targets such as Lilith. Then you're going to want attack speed, all stats, critical strike chance, and ranks to tornado. For our pants, the main stats you're going to want to worry about is willpower and all stats. That way you are getting more critical strike chance and you are getting more damage. Uh, then damage reduction and max life is nice, just so that maybe you can survive some of the smaller things like her auto attacking you and that kind of stuff. But again, this build is all about doing the maximum amount of damage. Then you want to go ahead and throw disobedience on there for the extra damage reduction, which that's pretty much always going to be maxed out. Then on your boots, the main thing that you're going to want, you're going to want, honestly, is the max evade charges. If you don't have max evade charges on your boots, you're going to be in a really bad place for dodging the skulls. So make sure you have those. And then also for stats, you're just going to want to go into movement speed. You're going to need the movement speed. Then you want willpower. And the next two are kind of like a flex. You could go all stats. You could go dexterity or you could go into spirit cost reduction. Uh, these were the best ones that I found. 51 willpower and 59 dexterity. The strength doesn't really matter. It's the throwaway stat. But these boots do do the job for you. And then also you're going to want ghost walker on them. While unstoppable and for four seconds after, you gain 22% increased movement speed and can move freely through enemies that way you just have the extra movement when you're popping your grizzly rage now on your amulet you're going to want blurred beast this is going to be your main point of damage while dashing shred seeks out nearby enemies instantly dealing 100 141 percent of the poisoning damage to them up to 150 percent on a perfect roll once you put it on your amulet this is what's going to give you your crazy damage multipliers and allow you to do those three, four, five hundred million crits on Lilith. As for stats on the amulet, you're going to want to go ahead and put damage while shape shifted, willpower percent, three ranks to toxic claws, and then more movement speed. Movement speed is going to be huge in this fight for dodging those skulls in the third part. You're going to have plenty of damage to get her one shot. But the core thing to beat this fight is dodging those skulls. From there on your rings, you're going to want to run Rampaging Werebeast so that the, the duration of your Grizzly Rage lasts longer. And then Retaliation so that your core skills deal extra damage based on the amount of Fortify. For your stats, you're going to want Vulnerable Damage, Critical Strike Damage, Critical Strike Chance. I want Resource Generation. And to be honest, it's really not necessary because you're basically only attacking when you have Grizzly Rage. So you're not needing to get your spirit back more quickly because the Grizzly Rage goes ahead and takes that care, like takes care of that for you. So honestly, I would change resource generation and put in something else that's going to give you more damage. For our hearts, you're going to want Tempting Fate. That way you're dealing 79 up to 80% more critical strike damage, but your non-crits deal 37% less. Your critical strike chance is so high on this build that this gives you a massive power spike. You're going to want to use revenge for the extra damage reduction. Again, we are pretty squishy with this build, so it just helps to have that little bit of extra damage reduction. And then as always, you're going to want to run the barber, but you do want to run a higher second barber Three and a half seconds, honestly, is kind of low, but I was able to get it done with three and a half seconds. 3.8, 3.9, or four seconds is definitely going to be the ideal Barber Heart. When you're going around and you're killing mobs, the lower Barber Hearts are great, but when you're trying to stack that huge critical strike damage against a boss with a ton of health, you do want the longer Barber Hearts. Then for weapons, we do go a one hand and a totem again. 
This is definitely the best combination just for the utility and the extra aspects. On your totem, you're going to want spirit cost reduction, critical strike chance, cooldown reduction, and again, I had resource generation on here. It is nice, not necessary. You could flex that to something else that you find more suitable, but this is what I ran on mine. And then you want Dire Wolf's aspect. That way you gain the extra 25% movement speed when using Grizzly Rage, which is nice, but honestly, it's all about that 50% spirit cost reduction when you're using it so you can spam the maximum amount of tornadoes. And you do want to run emeralds on this build and that way you get the extra critical strike damage against vulnerable enemies and you do run rubies for your gear. That way you do have a little bit of extra maximum life. Then on our one-handed, you're going to want damage to close enemies, vulnerable damage, critical strike damage, and then willpower. You could change out damage to close enemies with all stats. That way you get a little bit of extra dexterity and a little bit of extra willpower. But this one-handed for me was doing an insane amount of damage and definitely worked out. And then you're going to want to run accelerating on it. Critical, strike, uh, critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by up to 25% for 5 seconds. Again, the more attack speed you have, the faster you can cast your tornadoes. That way you're putting out more damage, you're stacking all of the critical strike multipliers, and that is where you really gain those huge damage numbers. Alright, now let's talk Paragon board. For the glyphs that we'll be using, the first one is going to be Bane. That way we're doing extra poison damage, but also have a chance to double the amount of poison damage that we're doing to a target. After that, we go uh, Exploit. Exploit is great for making sure that everybody is always vulnerable and a little bit of extra damage to vulnerable targets. Fang and Claw, so that we're doing 12% increased damage to close enemies and the bonus to magic nodes. And then Spirit for the huge critical strike damage and overall damage that we're going to gain. Tracker, so that your poisoning damage effects last longer. But then also the extra poison damage. And then into Keeper. Keeper is great for the increased non-physical damage. And then again, the bonus damage or the bonus to all the rare nodes around it. This Paragon setup, we do use seven different boards. It is the best way to min-max all of the damage that we can do through rare, rare nodes, legendaries, and then making sure to get at least six glyphs. And I'm not going to go over the entire thing because I know it takes a while and it's really hard to follow if you want to put in the Paragon board yourself while you're leveling. So in the description, there will be a link to this written guide with all of my gear, aspects, and the full Paragon board. It'll also be the pinned comment for this video as well. But I truly hope that this video helped you guys out. I hope that you're able to take down Uber Lilith. If you made it this far in the video, don't forget, go ahead and like the video, comment, let me know how the build worked out for you, what you think about the build, any changes I could make, or a video you'd like to see in the future. And of course, make sure you're subbed to the channel and you click that bell so you know every time I'm posting new content.